Hello, my name is Jacob Harris, a 2020 graduate of the Engineering Design Technology Program at the Pennsylvania College of Technology. Today I'm going to be talking about my redesign for the standard wheelchair. When we were asked to think of an idea for our senior project, I wasn't quite sure what to do because I was really focused on trying to find something that I could have a use for. I adjusted my perspective and decided to look for things other people might be struggling with. After some thinking, I thought back to about a year and a half ago when my grandfather was at the end of his life. He had been confined to a wheelchair due to the, his deteriorating strength and have a habit with him nearly everywhere he went. As usual, my family embarked on our summer vacation to Canada. While there, living with my grandfather in the small cottage and having to load up his chair for dialysis made me realize how much of a pain they are to load up in a car and attempt to pack things in around them due to their height. In conjunction to this, I also remember the times my childhood friend and I would hang out and I would have to make room for his chair in my little car. This brought me to my idea to think of a way to redesign the wheelchair better around portability. Now you may say, Jacob, what do you mean when you say standard wheelchair? There's a lot of wheelchairs out there. What I mean when I say standard is one of those very bare bones chairs that are usually used for those that are temporarily disabled or those who are at the end of their life. While it would be ideal for my chair to be open to both markets, those being temporarily disabled people and permanently disabled people, this chair is mainly for the temporary or hospital use. Essentially, I set out with the goal in mind to make it easier for families to adjust to transporting loved ones around that require a wheelchair for mobility. I also wanted to keep in mind the user as well and try to design something that could be operated by someone who is disabled. When I first started thinking, I was convinced I would find a way to make some sort of wheels with hinges incorporated in the rim to allow the wheel to fold and reduce the height. But the more I looked into components of a standard wheelchair, I realized that if I had found a way to fold the wheels, the height of the chair would be only as tall as the frame would allow since all standard wheelchairs that I looked at featured a frame that was low enough that folding wheels would hardly make a difference. Along with that, I realized there would be many problems with strength and stability with folding wheels, and with some sniffing around, I found the idea had already been thought of in a better way and was already produced, that being the collapsible wheel seen here. At this point, I had given up on the idea because if that idea had already been thought of, there wasn't any way that I would come up with anything better than that. I then decided to focus on the frame and see if there would be any way to change the height with respect to the frame. I then came up with the concept of a frame that included a channel system that would allow the user to slide the wheels up and down, allowing for easier storing. After patent search, after patent search, I couldn't find anything that did what my idea did, so I decided to move on with it. I then realized that the wheels being adjusted would mean nothing if the caster wheels stayed the way they were. So I determined I could have them swing up and down with a locking pin and bushing as seen in the rudimentary drawing here. My chair features swiveling caster legs to aid in reducing the height of the chair. These legs are held by a quick release pin for quick swiveling from the downwards to upwards position. My design also features vertically sliding wheels via aluminum channels welded to the frame. The adjustable wheels are locked in place by two at a handle quick release pins located on the back of the channels on the chair. It also features removable leg rests via quick release pins located underneath the seat of the chair. In addition, the anti-tip wheels located in the back of the chair are adjustable and removable with spring button releases. My design also features quickie 24 inch complete wheels with pneumatic tires. These wheels are held in place by a 4 and 3 quarters inch long stainless steel button quick release pin. My chair features a 17 inch seat and is 61 pounds in weight. 
dimensionally, my chair expanded is about 26.5 inches in width, 36.65 inches in height, and 46.63 inches in depth. My chair collapsed is 13.27 inches in width, 26.95 inches in height, and 36.63 inches in depth. The height difference between the collapsed and expanded is about 10 inches, which can be fairly significant when it comes to loading something like that into a car or small space. This dimension is nearly a foot shorter than other standard wheelchairs when collapsed with standard wheelchair heights on average being 36 inches tall when collapsed. As far as raw materials go, my frame is made of a 7 8 inch 6061 aluminum tubing due to its versatility, strength, and ease of machinability. To secure the frame together, my frame is cut and welded together very similar to a bicycle frame. All metal featured on the chair is 6061 aluminum because of the before stated strength and versatility. All tubing is to be cut and welded together and the back channels for the wheel blocks are to be machined out with a CNC machine. To further elaborate on the processes, I have chosen to use to assemble my frame, I decided to combine heating and bending with cutting and welding because of some of the shapes in my frame. For example, the armrests are kind of at an odd shape and I figured that the only practical way to do it was to order a slightly longer pipe than what was needed for the section, heat it, bend it into place, then cut it to spec. This process is also to be used on the caster legs that are to be manufactured. As far as the welds that hold my frame together, a majority of them are to be an eighth inch fillet welds that will go all the way around the seams of the piping. I chose to weld my pieces together because I feel it would be easier to cut things to spec and weld my frame together rather than trying to just get the right angles out of bending the metal into shape, which can be at times affecting the strength. Now, when it was time for finite element analysis, I decided to test the two greatest points of stress on the chair, those being the main bolt that connects the two cross supports together in the center and the quick button release pin for the wheels. I tested these two parts as if there were a 400 pound individual sitting in the chair. While my chair is most likely not wide enough for a 400 pound person to sit in it, I decided to do a worst case scenario for the best results. As seen here, the quick release pin used for the wheel blocks held up fairly well against 200 pounds of force. On the left, the displacement of the pin can be seen due to the weight and the displacement is smaller than that of the thickness of a sheet of paper coming in at a maximum of one ten thousandth of an inch. To the right, you can see the stress plate on the bolt coming in at 3.707 KSI. As seen here, the center support bolt also held up fairly well. The displacement of the bolt at its max, while under the force of 400 pounds, was also under the thickness of a sheet of paper, coming in at 1 100,000th of an inch. The stress on the part seen to the right came in at a max of 7.423 KSI. As we know, if the factor of safety is below 1, then that means that the part will bend out of shape and will not return to that shape. Fortunately, both of my parts came out above one, making them able to withstand the loads put on them without bending out of shape permanently. After some cost analysis, I determined all the raw materials required to fabricate the pieces would cost $507.21. As stated before, all metal that is to be machined is 6061 aluminum to ensure strength and manufacturability. Also, most of my metal stock was bought with the intent of using the entire piece of stock to make both pieces needed for each side of the chair. I also determined the cost of my hardware required to build my chair. This total came out to be $560 and really makes you realize how much smaller bits of hardware can add up in the final cost. This list included all my nuts, bolts, washers, drive wheels, quick release pins, and caster wheels. I tried to limit how many different sizes of nuts, bolts, and quick release pins I used for added simplicity. 
It is also important to note here that some of these parts come in packs and provide me with more hardware than what I need, which inherently is a waste of money and can be accommodated for by making more than one chair. Most of my parts were able to be plugged in into the SOLIDWORKS costing application to determine the nitty gritty details of the labor associated with my chair. As seen pictured here, all parts with the exception of my frame are here accommodated for different quantities produced. Due to a lack of resources during this time of quarantine, I was not able to fully put together a detailed labor list like the previous parts for my frame. I was able to, however, determine the price per one set of frames as well as a ballpark cost for the cost of a welder and an assembler to put my chair together. This brings us to our grand total for the chair, coming in at a whopping ballpark of $5,570.24. This price comes out to be about the same price as a higher end electric chair. It is obvious some changes would need to be made in the future if my chair were to become a feasible design. My work schedule on this project was not consistent in the slightest, and a majority of the work was done between January and now due to some personal issues this year that set me back in my studies. As stated before, this project clearly has some flaws that would hold it back from being a feasible idea. First things first, the cross supports on the chair could be simplified by only having one bar across instead of two. This would reduce the weight and cost of having extra, extra aluminum on the chair. Secondly, I think the channel on the back of the chair could be stripped down a bit to save on weight and cost, as well as make a simpler part to produce. Third, the weight of my chair, as touched on before, is on the heavier side, compared to other wheelchairs of the same build envelope. The weight would be okay if the seat were wider to accommodate for bigger people, so that revision would either be lighter materials or making the seat wider and keeping the weight around the same. Considering that the price is pretty much the issue with the feasibility of this project, I think reducing the amount of custom part machining that would be needed, as well as tweaking the frame, would help reduce the cost of the chair. Many higher-end standard chairs range from $500 to $2,000, so that's the price range I would aim for in the future. To wrap this up, this project, through all the bumps, twists, and turns, turned out far better than I expected. Even though the feasibility is questionable due to the outrageous cost it would take to make this chair, it accomplished all the goals that I put in place for it to achieve, and I'm very proud of what I've created. Thank you for watching.